What's up guys? Today we're back and we're going to be going over the 10th passage in the psych Soch section of the AAMC sample test. And I am so stoked because this is the last passage in the sample test that I will be going over. Let's jump right into it. Okay, it looks like the passage is called Race and Gender Disparities in Rates of Cardiac Revascularization. Okay. Annually, more than 1 million Americans undergo cardiac revascularization procedures, which include coronary artery bypass graft surgery and percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty. Previous research has indicated the existence of large and persistent differences in the use of these procedures by race and gender. I probably could flowchart something on this, but I'm just not like overwhelmed yet, and so I'm going to wait until I get overwhelmed. I'm sure it's coming. To investigate disparities in revascularization usage, a team of researchers randomly sampled 5880 Medicare beneficiaries from five states, patients who were between the ages of 65 and 75. From that random sample, 567 patient records were excluded because the hospital refused to participate or because medical records were either missing or incomplete. Mm, that's sus. I wonder if they will ask us about uh, some research methods question based on that. The researchers reviewed medical records in order to collect the following data, utilization and clinical appropriateness of revascularization by race and gender, the proportion of patients for whom revascularization was medically indicated but that did not receive treatment, that's a frowny face, and mortality rates for coronary revascularization versus medical therapy. So just going over research methods. The researchers controlled for patient characteristics such as age and income and for hospital characteristics such as hospital revascularization rate. Analysis of the data found that revascularization procedures were medically indicated more frequently among white patients than black patients. Revascularization procedures were also medically indicated more among male patients than female patients. Study results comparing revascularization rates by race and gender are presented in tables 1 and 2. Note there were no significant differences by race or gender in terms of patient election to have revascularization so aka the patients um it's not like white patients were more like no i don't want revascularization like they they didn't have a difference in that table one says percentage of patients who did not receive revascularization when medically indicated by race so we don't have any uh markers of significance but i would venture out to say that that's probably a significant difference Table 2 says percentage of patients who did not receive revascularization when medically indicated by gender. And um, it looks, I don't know if that's going to be considered significant. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I didn't end up flowcharting anything. I'm sorry. I, I didn't see anything that needed flowcharting. Psychosoc does this to me. 52 says controlling for patient and hospital characteristics means that the researchers... So here we are. It's just, it's just a research methods question. It has nothing to do with the passage, really. It's just asking, do you know the definition of what controlling for something means in research speak? If you're not familiar with what that means, I would definitely recommend you getting familiar with what that means. And that's not only for the MCAT, that's for research literacy in the future, because you're going to have to read research articles either in your pre-med career or in uh, medical school. A, received information from the patients in hospitals in order to construct a, construct a sample. That's not controlling for things. B, conducted statistical analyses to establish a causal relationship between variables. No, most of the time, like, controlling for something is, like, a statistical thing um, that you do, like, in your software. But it, it doesn't establish a causal relationship. So, no, that's not the right answer. C. Determined variations across the sample of patients and hospitals included in the study. Uh, just just determining the variations is not enough. That That's not the definition of controlling for something. D. Consider various factors in the sample that might be confounding variables. Yes, that's perfect. And again, usually this is like a statistical um, consideration, but um, yeah, this, this definition works. 53, which of the following conclusions about healthcare delivery is best supported by the research in the passage? A says the study provides evidence of individual discrimination in provider attitudes, which confirms racial, racial prejudice in revascularization use. So I see a couple of terms that are sticking out to me, individual discrimination and prejudice. Prejudice is all about, how do you spell that? Is all about attitudes, um, not behaviors. If it if it rolls over into a difference in behaviors between, um, you know, two different groups, then that would be considered discrimination. 
So those two often get lumped together um, or they, they make you kind of pick those two apart. And so remember that prejudice, a lot of people say prejudge. That's kind of like you're judging them, but in your head, it's like an attitude. Whereas discrimination would be if that attitude crossed over into you treating someone differently or behaving differently towards someone. So there weren't any, um, if I remember correctly, there were not any specific uh, examples of providers treating people in different or discriminating towards people individually. Um, it, it reminds me more of not individual discrimination, but institutional discrimination. So those are also two that, that kind of get pinned up against each other. So make sure that you are you are able to pick those apart. Individual is obviously going to be just one person, an individual, and then institutional is going to be like a hospital system or the government or a, some business. And remember, since these are both discrimination, they are both going to have to exude um, behavioral differences um, based on what part of a group you are in, whether that be race or gender or sexual orientation or whatever. So enough chatter. Is A correct? I don't think so, because I don't think this was individual discrimination. I'm not going to mark it out. I'm going to see what the rest of the answer choices say. B, the study provides evidence that some healthcare providers may show racial prejudice when making decisions about revascularization use. So it's it's kind of hard to... Um, so it's kind of hard to decide whether there is prejudice involved in this because we are just given the outcome. We are just given like how many people got the revascularization procedure, which that is a behavioral outcome. That is like, did they get it or not? That is overt. Um, so I, I don't know. I want it to say discrimination and not prejudice. See, the study provides evidence of institutional discrimination and revascularization use, but cannot provide or cannot prove racial prejudice in provider attitudes. That's kind of what I was saying. Like, it, it's kind of hard to decide whether or not these people are actually prejudiced or if there is just like an institutional discrimination for one reason or another. You, maybe you can argue that in order to have discrimination that you have to have prejudice, but I don't, I don't know. That's kind of crossing a line. And so I feel like C is our best answer here so far. D, the study provides evidence that disparities in revascularization use are unrelated to quality of care and thus do not show racial prejudice. Uh, I don't think that the study provides that evidence at all. I think it probably is related to quality of care. So I would go with C. Based on the information in the passage, which aspect of the research design poses a methodological limitation? So knowing some common limitations is an important aspect of being, being able to answer these research questions on the MCAT correctly. So what I'm going to do, instead of going back in the passage and trying to find the limitations, because there was a ton of research methods up in there, I'm going to read the answer choices and then see if that was something that I feel like, one, is a limitation, and two, was actually something that happened up in the, in the methodological part of the passage. A, their reliance upon medical records as a source of data. Medical records are a great source of data. B, the lack of interview data with patients or providers. Um... Perhaps. I mean, I don't know if I don't know if that would be like a limitation or if that would just be something that like could add another variable. If we had interview data, that might be able to determine prejudice or something. But I think we were just kind of looking at discrimination. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to say maybe. C, the percent from the sample that was excluded from the study. Ah, that's what I was talking about. Those people that were so sus. Like these, it's talking about these records that were excluded because the hospital refused to participate or the medical records are missing or incomplete. When, when you exclude people from a study, it, it's really um, not good for the research. It, it is a huge limitation because you have to think, is there something special about that group of people that you are excluding um, that could skew the data? Like you're excluding all the people that definitely showed discrimination, and in whatever treatment that they received that could definitely skew the data um, or just provide more data to support the hypothesis so you really have to consider when a lot of people are excluded from a study especially if they're all for the same reasons like the hospitals refusing to participate that's us so I like C and I like it better than B actually D the number of patients who were included in the study so th th that 5,000 number that's a that's a great number so I don't think that that's at all. The, the limitation. C is the correct answer. 55. A researcher suggests that the healthcare disparities described in the passage are partly due to cultural bias. Which concept is most relevant to this hypothesis? 
So I guess this could be um, saying that maybe if the healthcare providers were a certain race, that they had a cultural bias against other races or something like that, or the same for gender because there was a, a slight difference with gender as well. So basically, which of the following concepts would, would kind of relate to that too? A says social reproduction. So that's not necessarily involved in like bias or anything like that. So I'm not loving it. I'm not going to work it out, but I'm not loving it. B says stereotype threat. So that's when a, a stereotype can kind of cause a self-fulfilling prophecy and, and you can actually act out the stereotype threat. A lot of times people talk about like, um, I think there's actually a passage on the sample test that's like talking about women being bad at math, how that's a stereotype. And so when they, when the women were made aware of that stereotype, they actually performed more poorly in math. So that's called stereotype threat. I don't, that, that, I don't see that in this passage. There was no stereotype that was like stated. C says social mobility. So that's like moving between classes. Um, I don't see that in the passage either. So far, social reproduction is actually the best one. D says ethnocentrism. Actually, that's the best one. Ethnocentrism is when we look at other people's cultures through a lens of our own culture rather than kind of considering that their culture views what they're doing as uh, completely different, essentially. So that can definitely be related to bias, and that's our best answer here by far. All right, guys, I hope that that was helpful. Please let us know what you want to see down in the comments because we are officially done with the sample test. Make sure to hit like and subscribe to support us, but until next time, I'll see ya.